Okay, come. This is Solitude Farm Cafe. This place every single day, except for Sundays, we churn out food which comes from the fields like this. It represents a cultural redemption. It represents a reclaiming of this tender relationship with Mother Nature. So come, let's get the let's get the salad on the go. We'll try and put these things a bit separate to start with, but there's the there's the um the hibiscus, there's our um papaya. That's a bit more green that one, that's more will be a bit more red. There's the radish, there's the lemon, there's the um there's some of the pumpkin flower. I think there's some more in the bottom. Look, there's the corn silk that we talked about. There's the corn silk, and there's some of the blue flowers. These are the wing bean leaves, if you remember, they're sweet. And here are some of those peppery pipalongum leaves. You can see them. There's the throat plant, the Indian oregano. Also, it's sort of similar to ajwain. And um, oh, there's some more pipli there. There's the corn that we grabbed. And there's the bale fruit that we haven't yet taken, separated from the, the stem. There's the bale fruit. There's the sweet potato. And there is a little bit of that um, mixed in with it. Look, is the uh, Brazilian joyweed or the purple joyweed, another type of amaranth. If you remember that one, a bit more of it. There's a bit more of the sweet potato. Here is what we call the ponangani, which is the one that's good for your eyes and good for your um, your skin. And here is the wild passion fruit leaves. Here is the, um, here's the drumstick and the pumpkin tendrils, which are, which are, you know, really a delicacy, nothing less than a delicacy. Here are more pumpkin tendrils all mixed up in here and more blue flowers. Um, here is a little bit of that portalaca. Here is the, well, on the top here, we have a bit of the ultimantera. Comelina. There's the comelina that we were talking, I was raving about, saying it was like a rediscovering <coughs> of a friendship. More sweet potato, more pumpkin flowers, more passion fruit, wild passion fruit. But there's a tipoli, little tipoli there, the, the long black pepper. And then we have some rosella. And there we have the chicken spinach, the Thalinium triangulare. A couple of these uh, types of chili. And we have in here, which is one of my favorite, is this, what my friends are calling the mushroom spinach. It's the um, Chinese violet. Tamarind leaves, a bit of sourness to the, to the dish. And then we have also the guava leaves. And again, talking about sourness, there's our rosella. And then we have our, what we started with, which was the, the parapukere, the, um, the potalaka, which again is another edible flower in the bottom there. And a bit of ivy gourd, if I remember rightly, which is actually, if I tell the truth, this is really my favorite. So, in here, it's just a mix of everything else, I think. Yeah, there's that satinikira that we looked at in the beginning as well. That's not to be overlooked. Those are little weeds that just go everywhere and people sort of, they just walk by them. And yet they are really the fabric, you know, they're the threads of a culture. Because if you go in the villages and you ask the old ladies, oh, what did you eat? You know, as a kid, they'll say, well, you used to eat that and this and this and that and this and that. And now you go and you ask people, what do you eat? And they say, oh, we eat potatoes and carrots and beetroot and cabbage. And none of it grows here, you know. So we lost our relationship with where our food comes from. So it's all very well, all the, the concepts that we come up with in the life and then the big green organic farming and this and that. But if it doesn't address our relationship with Mother Nature and something which is really fundamental to our being, then life has passed us by. There is our, that's our mix. This will just, uh, this will just, 
you'll just wash it all together because it's basically a hodgepodge of all the rest. But uh, I'll just separate a little bit of the blue flowers there. Then we can see, let's count what we've got. About 30 different plant, um, you know, items for a salad. Now that is cool. And most of them, they just grow easily without any effort. This is what we're talking about, cultural redemption. Okay, so I'm gonna wash these things up and then we're gonna start chopping them up and within, within minutes, we're gonna have a salad. So we can start with the um, the hibiscus flowers. You just take off the petals. That's that's all there is to it. They don't even need to be washed. They've been, you know, if you're in a city, okay, with dust and pollution around, you might want to wash them. I'll wash a little bit the um, the pump, the pumpkin, not because the flowers are dirty, but they might have like insects inside. Sometimes insects, eggs, and stuff that you might not feel so happy about eating. So, and we also with the pumpkin flowers, we just snip off that end bit there, you look, it has the stamen, that's not so good to be eating. And um, these blue flowers, they're good to go, there's not, well you could, with the blue flowers you can also snip off the green if you want, that might make it a bit, bit more tasty. Um, but I actually did that already in the field. And so that's the flowers, those are good. Personally, I don't mind, you know. In Tamil we say, Eating the ants is good for your eyes. You can, your eyes can see. Okay, then we got the corn silk and we got these tendrils. Those guys, you know, we're just gonna like chuck them up like that. And they'll just, that'll just go in the salad like that. Remember, this is just my way of doing it. You might be a much better cook than me and you might go, oh, Krishna, man, look, I'll show you how to do it. Please, show me how to do it. Send me some videos, teach me, you know? But this is how I'll just, I'm just doing it now, like simply like this. These flowers again, you can just, even I don't even normally do it. I'm doing it like this on the camera for you to make it look like I'm more than I am, you know? But usually I just rip it up and throw it in, you know? So next we'll take the, these chilies, the corn and this uh, radish and we'll just prepare them. It's a bit large, okay, you just cut it up a bit. I would like to have my leaves in there so I can see what's going on in there. The radish stem is really yummy. Just cutting it up in little smaller pieces. Put that in there. A few more bits and pieces in there. Just also just rip it up, it's nice. The guava leaves. You see the guava leaves. You know, you see some of these things like the like the throat plant, that is quite strong. So if you cut it up a bit, it's gonna be a little better. You know, I'm being a little bit rough here, I must say. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a cook, I'm just me, you know, I'm just Krishna. Krishna enjoying his, the gifts of his mother for the morning. But look, again, the guava leaf, look, that is also a bit strong, I find. So if that was cut up, you get more, the, that taste will be more dispersed throughout the salad. But that's good, I think. Okay, now the corn. the corn it's been a bit damaged by the uh, by the squirrels
you don't want to peel these seeds too much. The nutrition's in the peel. They even say that there are, you know, there's very beneficial um, bacteria uh, for your for your the flora inside your stomach that are in the soil, you know, on the folic acid and this and that. So this we could dice. I think there's so much um, stuff there which is leafy, to have a bit of something that has a big crunch in it will be nice, uh, you know, change in the salad. So put that dice them in there, um, slice them rather. Jack, there's these chilies. I think I'll only use one of these chilies. It's quite a strong taste. And this I really take care to make it small because I don't want to have like one big chunk of this in my mouth. Then we have the papaya. So the papaya, again, I just wash it because it has this sap. But yet this white sap, it can hurt people. There are certain people like my father who came to visit me and he helped by peeling some papayas. And within an hour, there was his hands, the, the skin had been eaten through. Some people have very delicate skin. So actually in our cafe, the ladies use gloves to prepare this because they do it every day. It becomes a bit difficult. It's, I think it's a very um, strong alkali, actually. We've got that one there. We've got our two papayas. The seeds are a little bitter, but they're actually a pepper substitute. Really? And they're really good for your, um, they're really good for parasites. So whack a few seeds in there, you're not going to notice. If it was a plate full of seeds, not nice. But a couple of seeds here and there is going to be fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sit, we're going to grate these. You've got to be careful of lips at the end. Um, to the, into the papaya. So that's probably enough there, that's good. Trying to share this love of, 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 how can we be well in our world if we don't have, accept the love of mother nature? You know, it's that we want, that we, that we want to share. So if you'd like to support us, you know, these ads are going on though, click on the ads. Let them go through. It brings us in a little revenue. It helps us to maintain our channel. I haven't even bought a mic yet. Like that's the next thing. So if anyone wants to make a donation, we'll try and set that up. We need mic, you know? We're still doing this with mobile phone. I don't pay my cameraman. You know, there's a lot of expenses going on. And it would be wonderful if this channel grows, but it will grow because of some support, you know, practical support. Anyway, let's get back to the salad. If you lived in Italy, a secret ingredient would be olive oil. You know, it wouldn't be so secret. It'd be like, wow, everything you do is going to be awesome. But my secret ingredient is coconut. So, coconut and peanuts. So there's a bit of coconut that's grated. We have them growing in the farm. And those are peanuts. We also have them growing in the farm. So with the peanuts, we make a, a powder. And I'm going to sprinkle a bit of the powder onto the, uh, onto the salad like that, a little bit of peanut powder, and I'm gonna put a little bit of coconut into the salad as well, like that. That'll give just like another nice little touch to it. And then the last touch is a little salt and some lemon. So we have our lemons that we had harvested. We just need to cut those up. It's a little bit immature, this lemon. That's why the not so much juice is coming. But it's actually a very yummy tasty lemon. This is a, is a very, I would say this is a bit more fruity than acidic. You know, you have the little round ones, they're very acidic, but this is more fruity. And I just got to get a bit of salt and then we're done. Oh, I'm so hungry. I'm gonna love this. I'm gonna make you guys jealous. You'll have to come to Solitude and try it out.
This is what we give at lunch, you know, farm salad. This comes along with the dosa. And if we have like tapioca chips that day, we throw in a few chips, a slice of papaya, and you're laughing, you know. This is the, this is the lunch, this is the bee's need. Let me get a bowl. Thank you, Mother Nature, for these gifts. Really, they are gifts. And they undermine the industrialization. The industrialization of this planet is probably, you know, it's our nemesis. It's the one thing that's constantly destroying us. And it's into our education system. It's in our, our medical system. It's in everything that we're doing. Industrialization, industrialization. And this has nothing to do with industrialization. This is a gratitude. Let's see how gratitude tastes. Oh man. So many tastes coming through. You wanna you wanna just have a film of me eating? Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> and see how many how many likes we get? Just a video of Krishna eating his salad. Oh. It's like an embrace, you know? It's like a tender embrace. It's, it's eating love. That's what it's eating. Love from our mother. Mmm. Guys, keep watching. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. <laughs> Maybe technology will improve in the next hundred years that we will you'll actually be able to pass this digitally. But I doubt it. Mmm. Wow. There's a really nice video I did called Who is a Fool? And I'm reading from my guru's text. I have a guru, you know, I mean it's not the guru like a guru, but it's, it's like a guru. He's called Masanobu Fukuoka, and he's the inspiration for everything I've done. He wrote a book called The One Straw Revolution. And um, so I'm reading a text from this One Straw Revolution called Who is the Fool? And I teach people how to make a green papaya salad at the same time. So check out that video. Please subscribe. Please share this with your friends. Hit that notification bell, because then they tell you when the next video comes out. And, uh, you know... Play through the ads, please. It, it just helps us out a lot. If you want to be involved with us, it would be great. If you want to send us videos or, or photos of what you're doing, that would be really interesting. Community is at the very heart of this subject. Thank you so much for letting me share this with, this, you, know, this with you today. It's, um, it's really about you that I've done this today. And it's such a deep pleasure. You have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Mm. You're still here. <laughs> Go. Go and grow some plants. Go and forage. Mmm. <laughs> oh man. What a breakfast.